Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and welcome back to Class of Fridays. We are looking at another G.I. Joe 6-inch classified series figure. This time we are looking at Prophet Director Destro. Yeah, this requires some explanation. This is a modern interpretation of a very rare G.I. Joe action figure. There was a release of Destro in 1997 that had a leopard print pattern. That figure was recalled, and very few remain in existence. I discussed it at length when I reviewed the 1992 Destro version 3, so I won't rehash it here. Suffice it to say, you would need to be a G.I. Joe collector with some experience to get this joke. That very rare Destro figure has been nicknamed Pimp Daddy Destro. This one, of course, is not called Pimp Daddy. It's called Profit Director Destro. Looking at the packaging, we have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories, and there are some rather remarkable accessories. The G.I. Joe classified series logo is in gold foil. We've got the artwork on the front and on the side in this kind of modern angular style And I've got to say I don't love this artwork my apologies to the artist But this just isn't doing it for me It is number 15 in the series and that 15 is in that gold foil as is this Cobra emblem on the back We have the generic poster artwork. We've seen on other figures. Hey, when are we gonna get the mauler in classified scale? Let's make that happen on the other side of the box We have these symbols that represent his specialties this one means his religion is mechanic. I can't tell you what these are because what Destro and the Baroness get up to in the privacy of their own bedroom is none of my business. This is Santa's magic bag of toys and Marcellus Wallace's briefcase, and this means the anvil is his favorite workbench in Minecraft. As much as I'm opposed to the idea on principle, we really must open this up and take a look at the figure. Here is Prophet Director Destro out of the packaging in all his glory, and wow, that certainly is something that exists, isn't it? His colors and accessories are intended to make him look like a pimp from the 70s. I apologize if using that word offends anybody, but that is the word, so I'm going to use it. This is not the first Destro in the Classified series. It is a recolor of the first Destro, which had colors similar to the version 1 figure. And for reference, here is Destro version 1 from 1983. The 1997 Pimp Daddy Destro figure was a recolor of the 1992 Destro version 3 figure. I have already reviewed that figure, so if you'd like to learn more about Pimp Daddy Destro, check out that review. The first Classified Destro figure was pretty well received by G.I. Joe fans pretty much every everybody liked it. It may be a bit too soon to reissue that figure in new colors, and such outlandish colors. Let's take a look at this guy's accessories. He has a stack of $100 bills in flames because he has money to burn. This is a stack of US $100 bills, so I guess Destro uses American currency. You know what would be a cool custom is if you did this flaming money in another currency, like British pounds or euros or... Uh, who am I kidding? That would not be a cool custom. As with the earlier Destro classified figure, he has a gold pistol that fits in a red holster on his right leg. It was gold on the earlier figure, so they didn't even have to change the color for this. He has sunglasses with pink lenses. They are removable, and these are nicely done. I admit these are well done, but I'm starting to get down on these removable glasses on action figures. They usually don't fit well. They fall off very easily, and they're very easy to lose. He has a gold briefcase. It is a recolor of the black briefcase that came with the first Destro. It's a tight fit in the hand, but it can be removed with some effort. That briefcase can be opened up to reveal a Cobra computer and more stacks of money. His next accessory is the most exceptional, and you'll probably either love it or hate it. He has this leopard skin cape. It looks like it's supposed to be an actual leopard skin over a red cape. It's got paws and a tail, and it's held together in the front with a gold chain. That cape can be removed, and it's large enough that it will fit over his collar. It is a well-made accessory. I will give credit where it is due. It is well sculpted. It has good paint. It does exactly what it's trying to do. If you don't like the concept of Profit Director Destro, though, this is over the top. He has a few accessories that are not really intended to be removed. He has this belt that's connected to this holster on the right leg. He also has this necklace, this gold chain with a root 
Ruby Medallion. Let's take a look at Profit Director Destro's articulation. He has the excellent articulation we're accustomed to with classified figures, so he has a great range of motion at the head. His head is hindered a little bit by the collar, but he can move his head up and down side to side. That's really well done. He has a butterfly at the shoulder. He can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a twist at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a twist at the wrist and he has hinges at the wrists. That is on both wrists. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch. Great range of motion on that. He has a twist at the torso that may be slightly hindered by this belt and holster. His legs can split apart and that is definitely hindered by this holster. He has a twist at the thigh. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Looking at the details of this Profit Director Destro, he has a gold head similar to Destro version 2, the Iron Grenadier's Destro. He has a bare chest under that necklace and of course he has that tall collar with the leopard print inside. His suit is kind of a burgundy color. His collar, his elbow pads, his belt, and his knee pads are in kind of a darker metallic color. He has red bands around his wrists and black gloves and he has gold wrist rockets. Why not? There is more of that leopard print pattern on his waist and down his legs. There is a lot of paint on this figure. I have to admit that they did not skimp on the paint. Here's the thing about Profit Director Destro. I am definitely the target audience for this figure. I am a G.I. Joe collector. I understand the reference. I get the joke. I get the joke, but the joke is not very funny. I don't like this figure. This is one that probably should have been left in the 90s. If you stand up next to the first classified Destro, that figure looks so much better, and you can see all the awesomeness that you don't get with Profit Director Destro. Don't get me wrong, I want the toy designers to have a sense of humor. Not everything has to be serious. This is just a gag. I just don't like the figure. I will add one other thing about this Profit Director Destro. Arthur Berghardt, the voice of Destro in the G.I. Joe animated series, will be at Joe Fest this year, and from what I understand, he does not like Pimp Daddy Destro. So if you're at Joe Fest and you meet Arthur Berghardt, do not bring this figure for him to sign. He will not like that. Well, there you have it, the first of these Classified A figure reviews that I did not like. But I am curious if you liked it. When you saw this figure, did you get the joke? And do you think it's well executed? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out my huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. The only way I can continue doing these videos is with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You see the name scrolling on the screen right now? Your name could be there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.